In the years before the Great War, Big Mountain had been the home to the brightest minds of the 21st century. Scientists of vision were drawn to the facility to tackle the greatest technological challenges of the era. They sought to create a new world, fueled by technology for the benefit of all mankind. Sonic emitters, space-age alloys, DNA hybridization, force field particle research, autodoc advances in cranial, cardiac, and trauma surgery. The hopes and dreams of a century became realities in the electronic forges of Big Mountain. The nucleus of this research was the dome. A huge stone facility that held the labs of every science known to man. It was a think tank where no problem could not be solved, where no question could not be answered. The Great War brought a new energy to Big Mountain and its scientists. Although sheltered from the front lines, the scientists waged their own war fighting their battles at the atomic level. Equations and calculations marched endlessly across chalkboards and computer terminals toward one solution, winning the war. For years, the mines and computers of Big Mountain were a blaze of trajectories, weapon schematics, and nuclear theories. The problems began to outpace the solutions, first geometrically, then exponentially. As the war escalated, so did the questions. On the night of October 23rd, 2077, the scientists received an answer that put all their questions to rest. In the aftermath, Big Mountain's silent experiments went to sleep, their creators slowly dying in the new world that had been left behind. And the great stone in the middle of the Big Empty lay untouched, filled with countless technological wonders. Wonders that, in the end, had been answers to the wrong question.
I thought I heard the pacification field kick in. All right, shh. Nobody move. I'll handle this. Be warned, intruder. You are in the presence of a mighty think tank of Big Mountain. The collective geniuses of... We! Why, Oppenheimer, which one of you self-professed geniuses has been adjusting my volume knob? Who was it? Was it you, Eight? Oh, Dr. O, was it? Likely story. O couldn't spark two neurons if they were in a lattice of biomed gel. What? Me? Breaking news, Klein. It wasn't me, all right? I'm the robotical engineer. Eight is sound waves. That's his specialty. You always do this. You always demean me in front of guests. And it's not O, all right? It's... Enough! Either of you do it again, it'll be the last time. Now, now, great. Oh, I forgot what I was saying. What was I talking about? That response seemed demanding, as if cutting to the case. Uh, chase. How surgical. Reminds me of... Dr. Klein! A transmission from the Forbidden Zone! Coming right at us! It can only be... If it isn't it is my, my old colleagues, colleagues the, the mighty think, think tank, tank of, of Big, Big Mountain... Mountain. Big fools, all of you. It is I, Dr. Mobius, transmitting from my dome-shaped dome in the Forbidden Zone, a zone that is, yes, forbidden to you. Even now, my deadly robo-scorpions swarm across Big Mountain with their pincers and pointy laser tails. Soon, all science will be more. Even the technology sealed in the big mountain research centers cannot save you. So cower in your think tank. Wait for the end. That's all. Uh, goodbye. Mobius. Always the same broadcast. He's clearly mad, driven insane by his flawed and imprecise kindergarten-level research methodology. What are we going to do? There's no way we can breach the Forbidden Zone. There's those robot scorpions everywhere. The Forbidden Zone, where no brain has ever entered, nor ever returned. Except Dr. Mobius and the technologies that could save us. They are out of our reach. And Dr. Mobius mocks us. Did you see his cracked monitor? He's clearly let himself go. What? Ask the lobotomite for help? A, I think you need the fluid levels in your logic assist pumps checked. If this lobotomite responded, Dr. Klein, then it is clearly intelligent, perhaps even displays heretofore unknown levels of helpfulness. But what of its brain? We scooped that out. We don't even know where we left it. And for putting it back in, none of us have the knowledge. Yes, but it's still aware and responsive. Look at it. It's regarding us even now, with its big teddy bear eyes. If we ask it politely, and leave the part about the unnecessary, ruthless lobotomizing out, it might be favorably disposed to us. We removed your brain, yes. So soft, barely wrinkled, yet so flush with knowledge and experience. Brain extraction technology has been standard practice at Big Mountain for an immeasurable amount of time. 
Once the brain was out, then came the coils. The Tesla coils. The coils of Nikola Tesla. Yeah, eight, no need to brag. Wherever your brain is, it's transmitting thoughts to you through the... what, the, um... Uh... The Tesla coils! In its head! This is fortunate in many respects. If your brain was anywhere in the dome, why, you could access your aggression centers. Circumventing the pacification field, this is a no-no. We have never been in a fight. We do not want that. Reminds me of my days in American High. And Richie Marcus. That is my responsibility. Although in truth, the Autodoc had done most of the work already. Quite industrious, almost cut into all my investigations. Once it had removed the brain and I misplaced it, other organs began to cry for direction, using your nerves as telegraph wires. Rather than let them send their signals, I removed them as well. Shh, little organs. Go to sleep in your tanks. Dala loves you. First was the heart. Oh wait, I mean, second was the heart. Brain was first. Third was the spine. Totally overrated, that arrangement of vertebrae. Look at me, with my lumbar and thoracic curvature. Never had a use for any of that. Spineless is what I prefer. To be correct, you should say, the Autodoc took out your brain. It did all the heavy lifting. It has never worked so hard before. It was unusual. It worked so hard on your surgery. It destroyed its own memory. How odd. I bet your brain remembers what happened. That Autodoc junk heap was one of Mobius' creations, like the rest of the talking scrap metal in the attic. After that, the brain lost itself. Not in the metaphysical sense. Might have gotten flushed into one of the pipes. Actually, that's pretty likely. If so, it was flushed all the way to Mobius. Flush! That is the sound of flushing. Why, the Fisher of Rolando, enough of this biological surgery talk. Lobotomite, listen to my voice. It denominates me to ask, but we need your help. In most probable of probabilities, our enemy, Mobius, has your brain. This is not good. He will most likely come after our brains next. We want you to stop him, somehow, with science. That is correct, yes. I hope you're not demonstrating resentment now. If you are, well, we can't have that. We have no idea! This line of questioning isn't important to us right now! Why are you asking these tangential questions? Stop it! We need these technologies. You need to get them. You must get them. You are equipped to retrieve the technologies with your primitive form. 
We are not. It's kind of embarrassing. You have hands, and uh, a heartbeat, sort of, and eyes, mostly the hands. There's door handles and lockers and... Enough! We need your help. Will you help us? Excellent. This is turning out much better than the activate the retreat protocols and cower in my room idea I had earlier. Agreed. Oh, and I've used my robotical knowledge to, um, transmit the radio map waves to... Settle down, Eight. I would have gotten it in a second, all right? Eight's transmitted the last known coordinates of the research centers. They, um... They, well, move sometimes. Or get buried. Or blow up. Eight is correct. All we need are the schematics. This does not mean we do not want the cold hard technology, however. So do not give in to your biological tired laziness and decide you would sweat too much carrying them. You have a new spine. Use it. And even if you die in the act of reclamation, simply reaching them will auto-transmitify the schematics to us. That is still good. For us. The technologies are the X2 Transmitter Antenna Array, used to focus coherent thought at excessively high frequencies. The Psychoanalytic Cardiac Dampening Sneaky Stealth Suit. A suit like nothing this world has ever heard, seen, or could ever see. And AIDS Sonic Sound Wave Emitter Projecto Gun, able to broadcast sound at lethal frequencies. It also gives a great biogel massage. There. We have informed you of all we need. We estimate if you are focused, your time investment will be minimal uh, by our standards. If you work quickly, you will be the recipient of a gesture of gratitude from us. We do not bestow these old world gestures lightly. What illogic is this? Keep your filthy penis-tipped feet out of our labs and secrets! There are things here no lobotomite was meant to see. Things that would astound and possibly terrify. Terrify! Yeah, we don't come into your lab and decant your solutions. Only the magnificence of our monitors allow for true comprehension of the wonders of Big Mountain. Shield your jellied eyes, lest they burn from your skull. You would not dare. Perhaps I can change your mind, using the greatest of our sciences, the fence. The radar fence that surrounds the big mountain crater will prevent, uh, protect you from straying beyond the facility. The mighty radar fence protects us all. Get too close to the blinking posts, and the proximity warning shall be your warning. You are too close. If you get near it, your vision will blur as the electrodes in your head shut off one by one. Click, click, click. Possible memory loss will occur, along with long-term nerve degradation. It is tied to not having a brain attached to your nervous system. But the nerve degradation is nothing to worry about. Such degradation would take many lifespans to become evident, and all biology dies. Such tiny inconveniences are less than the greater convenience and conveyance. You see, if rendered unconscious by the pylons, you will be returned to the sink, seemingly instantaneously, by your deadened perceptions. Oh. Uh, Dr. Klein? Dr. Klein? If I may intersect for a moment. What is it? 
The lobotomite is asking me things, oh, and I'm trying to ignore them. My processors can't ignore you both at the same time. Well, you know how we asked it to fetch the sonic emitter thing? Turns out we already have it. <laughs> what are the odds? What is this, a high school science fair? Get your act together. You're making us look like a collection of round earthers. You're always yelling. My receptors can't take it anymore. And neither can my feelings. I am yelling because you contaminated specimens can't keep your probes off the volume knob on my voice module. It is truly the end of all intelligence when the lobotomite speaks more wisdom than you geniuses. So, if we have the sound wave, sonic projecto thing gun, then what in Heisenberg's name do we need from X8? Anyone? I believe we need a new frequency embedded into the gun. It was designed to broadcast many sounds once charged. We just don't know the frequency. And it is lost in X8, just as X8 is forever lost to us. The sadness of my high school days. The sadness of my youth. My youth lost. Oh, really, Boros? All you did in high school was call me Fink Tattletale and all the kids you hated. You little teacher's pet brown hound. Give the lobotomite the emitter. Does it have an audio effect frequency loaded? Oh, I don't think so. Wait. What is he doing? I think he's sonjaculating into the gun. Getting it warmed up. Ding. Turkey's done. You give it to the lobotomite. I'm not touching that thing. Oh, I don't think so. I'll do it if you two are going to be ashamed of your own technological needs. Let me give it a little sonic sterilization first. Alright. All antibacterial fresh. Here, my little teddy bear. I have thoroughly removed all Robco Terminate codes view from the device. It is clean, shiny, and ready for your hands. What did it say? Spit lead? What, like pencils? Oh, I think it wants a combustion pistol. A gun? Are you mad? We can't give it a gun. Guns kill. Leave big open holes in you that are like sores, but worse. Dr. Eight is correct. We already have given the teddy bear a lethal sonic death ray, filled with his sonic ejaculate and sterilized by my soft wooing. Giving the teddy bear a gun would be the equivalent of following a glass of hemlock with an Abraxo chaser. Delicious and redundantly deadly. If we're going to bring the Socratic method into it, fine. Give the Lobato bear a combustion gun. Burroughs, don't you have something like that? Are you mad? We can't give it a gun. Guns... Wait, I said that already. Yes, I have the Cyberdog gun. With the little floppy metal ears and the curious nose sensor. Here. Fine. Done. That gun makes me uncomfortable anyway. Always worried it's going to hump my chassis. Anything else, lobotomite? Fine. Moros, more ammo. The good stuff. Top shelf ammunition. Let's see. Hollow point? That's worthless, but tasty. Oh, and here's some JFP. As if bullets need jackets. The JFP might make it ill and poop a lot, but when you're hungry, you're hungry.
Hmm, yes, I believe Watts Electronics tended to make the battery shelf life on the low end. They certainly did. Batteries for my vib vivisectors would always come up short right before climax. I think Watts manufactured hollow discs, or was it hollow tapes? Never can keep those two straight. Anyway, we're out of small energy cells. Dala. You have some? Why do we... Actually, never mind. I don't even want to know. And no, I don't want to handle your batteries. Just pass them on to the lobotomite yourself. The sonic emitter should be sterilized and more than enough for you to encircle your warm hands around, cradling it gently with your finger muscles. Careful where you're pointing that. That device wasn't always a weapon. It was more like a force field kind of thing. Once. Force fields prevent us from moving forward or backward. They are irritating. The sonic emitter was specially designed to disable our own safety fields here in Big Mountain. When some of us lost our access passes, Dr. O... That only happened once! And I know you were behind stealth fielding my lab keys, Dalla. You formographer. Dr. O, you rewind that comment. Plenty of rewinding already going on in your formography tapes! Surprise the things don't snap out of their cases with repeated observations. Yes. Maybe. Well, no, not currently. Yeah, we lost that part of the schematics. Or Boros did, in one of his stupid labs, or inside one of his stupid pets. It is lost. All questions lead to this conclusion. The blue fields within Big Mountain shall be fielded with force forever. Fine, so, yes. Get these things for us. Do not attempt to comprehend their complicated schematics. That is for us to do. Well, good. What are the token words spoken in this case? Uh, thank you? Uh, yes. Thank you. Wait, is it leaving? But, Dr. Klein, the lobotomite will need rest, recuperation, things like that. I volunteer my chambers so it might be stared at, my monitor radar slowly scanning its form to collect sensitive data. No! That would put it too close to us. It could press buttons, turn lights on and off, and worse, let other lobotomites in. We could give it Mobius' old room. That's where its brain got scooped out anyway. And plus, some of its parts are already there. Might be more comforting for it to hang out with its spine and heart. Home is where the heart is, after all. <laughs> See what I did there? Wet literal. I suppose. We'll have to move that couch out of there. Been putting that off too long. Eight says, let the lobotomite take the Sync Central Intelligence personality chip and reinstall it. That stuffy Mobius program Butler can walk the lobotomite, feed it, barter with it for us. It would also prevent it from going to Higgs Village and taking up residence there. With my teddy bears. And it would be nice to have it so close. Your logic, combined with my desire to keep the think tank lobotomite free, has swayed me. Here, I present the Sync Central Intelligence. Lobotomite, take this chip to the sink. Plug it in and make sure the chip is clean or it could skip. 
Then make whatever crude biologic demands you need of the sink. It will cater to most of your hormonal whims. I cannot dispute your logic. Do we have objects to activate the chip's exchange routines? What? Like... stuff? Things? Yes. Things. I don't know. Might be some old Nuka-Cola or Sunset Sarsaparilla bottle caps lying around. It's not currency, per se. Still might be enough to trade the sink's trade routines. Mobius put that test line for caps in the code as a debug command, I think. I don't believe that was Mobius's reason. His wild speculation concerning post-Holocaust economic systems was quite extensive, and of high decibel. Enough! Surrender these so-called bottle caps, Nuka and Sunset alike. In their role as things, they will serve as adequate test subjects. All right, all right, here, cap away. Hope that stupid ship chokes on them. Again, your logic is unassailable in its simplistic need. Oh? Fine. It's not going to help. That ship will probably refuse them anyway, as stuck up as it is. If I were not as intelligent as I am, I would feel as if perhaps I'm being tricked. Impossible. Oh. More. How do you make the lobotomite a bottle cap factory, Klein? Or better yet, give it a ton of things to activate the chip. Again, the logic of the request is clear. Tonnage is not needed, only adequate weight. Everyone, display your things. I do not understand, yet I am intrigued by this potential display. No, age. you don't need to fill up the emitter again, really. Klein means things for trade. Display for trade. All right, let's consolidate. There's gotta be some junk around here. Magazines, useless, more caps, medicinal supplies, useless. Here. Chips? Are you echoing what he said, or are you asking for real? He's asking, yes. Dr. Klein, there are many other personalities. If you recall, you hurled them off the sink balcony after your argument with Mobius. It is not an argument if one is clearly right and the other is clearly wrong! I remember now. Yes, Lobotomite, there are other chips. If you want, find them. I believe they're stored on holotapes in many of our facilities. But you should stay out of those. No exploring and discovering things. The sink central intelligence should be enough for your... <laughs> needs. Yes, you may need to wiggle it in a bit, but don't force it. We can't recode them if you break it. There is no more we can do to aid you, and our patience levels are depleted. Now go. Rest in the sink if you must, but leave us to our research. Uh, if you're done, can we move again? My biogel's starting to crampagulate. Of course! Go man your science stations! Go! I am surrounded by children. Breaking news! Talking Lobotomite arrives in Think Tank. Its purpose? Unknown. Undefinable. Its presence here? Unpossible. Oh, really? Now the Lobotomite is a master of the dictionary arts. What, do you have a doctorate in verbology? No? I do. And... Stop the presses. Just in from my eye monitors. Is that Rob Kotek on your arm? It is! What's your agenda bringing that in here? Oh, really? 
Really? You have their tech on your arm. How dare you bring Rob Kotek in here? What are you showing off? How great Robert House and his big company are? Oh, we can make Securitrons better than any robot those geniuses at Big Mountain can make, and they'll last a thousand years. Uh, you're lucky I don't have hands to tear that dip boy off your arm, or feet to stomp on its stupid metal guts. Ugh. Damn Robco. <laughs> Worry about House? Why would I do this? Hope he died alone in a dingy room, streaming his last remaining bodily fluids into jars. And him and his dirty girl bots. Don't even get me started on those filthy biological catcher's mitts. Fine. Ask. All things robotical. You see a robot? I made it. See a broken robot? I made it that way. Deconstructed it down to parts. I have a gift with machines. I can render anything inoperable. Preserve them in a non-functioning state. Who asked you? You just wait until a working machine threatens you, and you'll wish I was around. Yeah, I do. It wasn't always, oh. I just took that one by default, because sometimes it's easier to accept the mistake as long as the purpose works. I don't want to get into it. It's a sore topic with me. Makes my gel ripple. Fine. Ask. That genius Mobius somehow cobbles together these really impressive looking robot scorpions with spare parts. Even painted them. Try to see what makes them tick. Can't even examine them without them detonating all over me. Left with shrapnel and burns. Every time. Supposedly, he has even larger models, even a giant robot scorpion, hidden deep within the Forbidden Zone. Yeah, right. Giant monsters, sure. Yeah, crazy, right? Something right out of a midnight science fiction feature. Ridiculous. What are the odds? Big Mountain used to be a mountain. Then there was a slight mishap. Now it's a crater. The dome used to be buried, now it's exposed to the sky. Don't get me wrong. It makes the sky light up like a planetarium at night. All those spectra. So soothing. I'd have a few left. Let me check. Yeah, there were a few under the monitors here. Here you go. Keeps the place tidy. Until our next scheduled audio transmission and reception, then. You are an unusual specimen to so boldly walk into the mighty expanse of the think tank. Fearless and proud as a teddy bear. Between the extraction of their higher reasoning abilities and urination-inducing fear, most lobotomites dare not approach us, let alone speak to us. Yet you have no such fear facing me. Epidermis fleshed with blood, plasma running molten beneath, your face contorting with muscular expression. Will you indulge me? Say a few words. Face towards the monitors, please, so that I might record it for further examination. Yes, yes, go on. Seeing your lips and mouth forming words, both revolting and somehow... How does it feel to have the flesh roll around in your mouth like that? To control each muscle and the tongue? 
Like having a fish or extremely dexterous slug lolling and flopping in one's mouth cavity. What? Nonsense. What? What are you doing? Stop it. Why? Why are you making me partake in this filthy formography? Enough. I am already intrigued. You have sufficiently percolated me. I don't know what it is about the biology of lobotomites. It... it infects my thoughts. All that skin and muscle and tissue. Perhaps... perhaps there is value in what you say. I... I did so enjoy breathing once. Long ago. Would you? I feel so ashamed, but yet so intrigued. You'll need to give me a rest in between visits, or else my gel might run over. If you're ready, let me radar scan you. Slowly. Woo. Personality and importance. We could not do without it. 
Surely you must be aware of the gravity of such attached appellations, just as surely as you must have a title. Oh, a mailman. A delivery man. Someone who takes parcels from place to place using their primitive feet or similar conveyance. You are the second one I've met in recent times. Very different specimens. Of course. You must have met others in your travels. This one had met other couriers, too. Although it sounded as if he hadn't met the correct one. He asked us all many questions, and then he asked a most perplexing one. We had to segment the event out of our memories for safety. I do not know, nor should we try to access it. Perhaps Klein has the logs. My evaluation would be to let your own curiosity go. I do not think that Klein remembers the conversation as being satisfactory. Oh, removing it is a simple procedure. Well, except the complications it can cause to the heart and spine. But once the heart and spine are gone, no trouble at all. Clamp the subject down. One laser incision around the skull. Crack. Snip. Done. The brain is finally free of the skinvelope, which is then kept automated for cleanup duties around Big Mountain. Lobotomites. With you, however... Something is definitely wrong. We've never had a lobotomite who kept speaking after being forcibly lobotomized. I am relieved the pacification field is working. If it didn't, I would broadcast some concern to my colleagues about safety protocols. That is a good question. My theory is that the Tesla coils in your brain pan are still connected to your brain somehow. It really could be anywhere. Brains are a lot smarter than most researchers give them credit for. We still have your spine and heart. If you were to somehow find your brain, wherever it slurped off to, you could humanically reduce yourself again. It is the pacification field emitters that are broadcasting into the emptiness of your skull. Without a brain, your aggression is suppressed in here. Why would you want such a thing? You might surrender to your hormones and commit primal aggression on me, on us, again and again. Then I would have to return the favor, activating my vivisectors and gently lobotomizing you from behind. Not something I would relish doing. No, the only way to circumvent the field is to have a brain. And we extracted that like we do all the lobotomites here. An interrogation. How fascinating. Please begin. Dr. Mobius, a monstrous brain creased with wrinkles of a thousand evils, with but one jaundiced eye with which to perceive the world, exiled from the think tank for crimes too heinous to remain in recorded memory, and perhaps differences in research methodology. His one terrible eye forever peers at us, an eye of ever-increasing magnification. He watches from his dome in the Forbidden Zone, spying on us all. It'll all become clear. If not, at least we will have the technology here at the dome where all technology belongs. When we have all the technology, all the answers, we can share it with the world, piece by piece. All will be in order and all will be like Big Mountain. The Big Empty? Now that's not a proper title for this research facility. You sound like previous test subjects that came here. This mountain, now Crater, encompasses the sum total of knowledge of humankind. It is Big Mountain, where all questions can be answered. 
You'll see. No matter what your questions, Big Mountain will provide the answers, as it has done for so many before you. Oh yes, we've had other subjects visit. It's why we had to calibrate the pacification field and warm up our brainial beams and vivisectors. Only a short time ago, we had three minus one subjects arrive, and they ruined several experiments and even injured two of our staff. It is a shame their brains left with them. With you, however, we have taken precautions to ensure that problem won't repeat itself. We've conditioned you so you can't speak of this place, discuss our secrets, or attempt to use force against us in any way. Isn't that nice? Because three minus one is two. Two spoke to us, one after the other. One mean, one curious. But there was a third we didn't speak to. The last one is the minus one. It got traumatized, then taken to one of our medical centers for de-traumatization. A rather unsettling procedure. Ask Dr. O. And you could have asked eight once, until he was severely damaged in the attack. We like him better this way. Perhaps you are stuck in a looping gesture of verbal intercourse. Until our next interaction, my intriguing little lobotomite.
lobotomize animal before me. What other terrifying terrors will plague us in our quest for knowledge? Communists? Communist animals, perhaps? Be warned. Attempt to propaganda me. I will shriek as a frightened babe, calling loyal cyber dogs to my aid. Do you comprehend, commie animal? Drama? There is no drama in science. As I learned in high school, science is an intellectual pursuit devoid of bestial emotions. Unless, of course, you are a communist. Like Betsy Bright, who sat next to me in math, and her smoking confederate Richie Marcus. As I learned in my high school, American High, AHS, drama is for movies, things of fiction. Here in the think tank, the only star is science. Before you is the brain of Dr. Boros, head of animology, bestology, and DNA scrambling technology here at Big Mountain. I lay the bones and hearts of animals bare beneath my searing gaze, especially the dogs. I did so love dogs once, especially Gabe, that rascal. But there are many animals to shape. Industrious Cazadors, the happy-go-lucky Night Stalkers. They are my living, breathing DNA test tubes. Indeed. Docile. Curious. Safe. Sterile. They are contained here at Big Mountain to preserve DNA and for observation. No, such creatures are found only here, for research purposes. They would no more be capable of escape than breeding. Because Big Mountain safety measures are far more sophisticated than their primitive animal instincts, we are their lords and masters. I cannot expect a lobotomite to understand the careful surgical castrating procedures used in their creation. Perhaps a demonstration of my castrating power would settle your doubts. Impregnate you? What? Do you want to make me vomit inside my tank? The mere notion makes the edges of my biomed gel crystallize into asymmetrical patterns. Nonsense! That is what you speak. Nonsense! From beyond! I was at the top of my high school class in American high school. I knew facts. I knew figures. I knew data. We would know if our research was flawed. It is not! We never contradict ourselves, so do not even try! In 2000, let's see, carry the three, then count backwards from the Great Static, or beyond, there were the Tarantula Debates, and something about Hawks, which made it around. 2003? May? Tuesday? It was definitely Tuesday. Why are we even debating this? What you ask is of no importance. Mobius besieges us. There are more important things to worry about than data and facts. The malignant tumor that is Mobius plagues us all. His hunger for power, insatiable. 
From his lair in the Forbidden Zone, his terrifying robo-scorpion army clicks and whirs across the crater a big mountain, ever seeking, ever stinging. He must be stopped, or all of Big Mountain shall be destroyed. The radar fence protects us all. If evidence is correct, the one who built it is me. It keeps anything with a disembodied brain inside. Like us. And anything without a brain, also inside. It is the ultimate defense against communist aggression. There'll be no infectious ideas on my watch. It makes perfect sense. Who are you to question the mighty radar fence? Ever since my anxiety-filled days of powerlessness and being bullied in American high school, I have dreamed of such security as the fence. That and giant cybernetic dogs that would ruthlessly patrol and kill anyone who wasn't my friend, like Richie Marcus and Betsy Bright. Who's laughing now, Betsy? I hope you and Richie are happy smoking in your radioactive coffins. I'm glad you never came to my birthday party. No! Beyond is death, despite mounting evidence to the contrary. No matter where these strange humans wander in from with their ideas and new brains, there is nothing beyond Big Mountain. Enough! Stop filling my precious brain cell units with irrelevant data. You sound like the other visitors, making wild claims of a world beyond, where there is a war beyond war. It is unproven and unthinkable. Bother the other doctors with your crackpot theories. I have no time. None of us do. There is logic and purpose in it. If these technologies are needed to pierce the Forbidden Zone, so be it. Science is powerful, and in the right hands, our hands, if we had hands, we would be nigh unstoppable. It is our home. Threatened by the horrors of Mobius. All we wish to do is continue our research. Layer upon layer, above and beneath the floor of the crater, until we have our answers. But no, Mobius will not let us rest. Scaring us with his scary robots, with their laser tails, and blowing up all the time. It was not our first choice of testing grounds, but we no longer have the luxuries of our test cities. Then we lost the mountain. After the explosion, we couldn't find it anymore. So the crater became our testing grounds for science. Yes. In the past, individuals would come to us, pay for technology, and if their town, community, or city was just right, we could use that city as a controlled experiment. Vault-Tec was much better at it, of course. We had to make do. Get permission. Sometimes. If only we could have used commie cities. But capturing whole cities was hard, so we captured enough commies to make cities of our own. So we had a group of Chinese prisoners to experiment on. Those were the days. But the true test was science on unsuspecting Americans. 
Whether it was holograms, new autodocs, toxins, vending machines, we wound them up, let them go into tiny, isolated towns. Then, we observed. Boom! Yes, quite unexpected and embarrassing. All better now after the landscaping, though. Much more pleasing to our monitors. And the crater helps keep everything inside, because it is bowl-shaped. Submit your questions. I shall respond with deadly answers. Until next time, then. Provided there is a next time. For any of us. Did you retrieve the technologies yet? We need them, as I have indicated. Why, yes. We are filled with the knowledge you speak of. If you wish to know more, simply ask the others. They can help you. Hmm? Oh, yes, the last visitor. Well, the one just before you. An interesting name from some language that's almost impossible to speak. What did we speak about? Melancholy fellow. Had questions about uh, history, but our conversation got interrupted. Twice, I believe. Once when the trains got derailed, and then a second time. Oddly enough, now that I'm accessing my databanks, I don't recall what the second time was. Mobius's incessant transmissions keep distracting me. Also, we didn't brain scrub the visitor. He may have left with some knowledge he shouldn't have. I believe, maybe. Oh well, I'm sure it's of no consequence. I don't make many mistakes in calculation or perception, so probability favors me. I am Dr. Klein. Chief Head Researcher of Logistical Operations and Ideology here at Big Mountain. I am surprised you have not heard of me. I am first in my field, first chair as it were, back in the days of chairs. Dr. Mobius was, 
Ah, to the horrifying creature you saw upon the screen, twisted by science. He was once one of us. A friend. He researched in directions contrary to the think tank. Brains, 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 always about the brains. So we exiled him. He says he left of his own volition, but that was to save him the embarrassment. Now he sends his intelligence-consuming scorpions from the Forbidden Zone to plunder the secrets of Big Mountain. He is a menace. Dr. O is certain of his findings, and no one else in the think tank is willing to test the results. Loss of brainial power. Terrifying. O has said on many occasions his inability to comprehend Mobius's robo-schematics is because of repeated robo-scorpion stings. It's a side effect of the cerebral scrubbing. It won't stop you from excreting, or asking questions, apparently. I have to correct that next time. Hormonal aggressive tendencies are actively suppressed, however. They are a no-no and not permitted in the think tank. The scrubbing also ensures your silence to keep Big Mountain safe. This facility is top secret, and you cannot speak of it to anyone outside of Big Mountain. Should have done it with the last batch, and the anti-aggression scrub. We had to take precautions after the last visitors. They caused a great deal of damage in a short time. Should have made sure they couldn't mention Big Mountain once they left. An oversight. Dr. Eight and Dr. O could tell you more. Dr. O more than Eight. The battle against the visitors damaged Eight's voice module. Suffice to say, those visitors are unwelcome. They stole a great many secrets and much technology. Impertinent. They also broke one of my trains. This is the Think Tank. The nerve center of Big Mountain. The greatest research center known to man, and to us. Here we test and test and test some more in the name of science, atomic power, nuclear power, and scientific power. Yes, because the intellectually challenged see an M and a T next to each other and take Occam's razor to it. While you are here, you will refer to this place properly, and you will do the same with the other scientists here. That glowing red scar? That laser lobotomy canyon maze carved in the landscape as if by some child? It is Mobius's fortress. From that hemorrhoidal fissure, he sends his amazing robo-scorpions to terrify and irritate us. <laughs> he always tended to the dramatic. Ask Boros. I believe he knows more about the fence than any brain. Except maybe Mobius. Mobius was involved in their construction, if I recall. But he's such a hack, he probably was reading off Boros' notes and schematics. Well, we didn't actually do it. We tried to clean up after, as always, but usually the autodoc runs are remote. But we programmed it, or Mobius did. Still, this new wrinkle with the Tesla coils in your skull was unexpected. I mean, we predicted we'd have a breakthrough eventually, but... Dala knows more. She supervised your spine peel and the heart circumcision, then dumped them both into the tanks in the sink above. Quite sanitary. Sure took her time. She always takes longer than projected with lobotomite surgeries. Not sure why. Yes. In all probable likelihoods, yes. Possibly. That it may have gone to Mobius is merely an inkling. I don't know why, but it may be something involving the surgery code. Actually, I don't know. 
All I know is it misplaced itself. Or it floated off. They get into robots sometimes and go on a tear. Mobius' legacy code was in the old auto dock. Yes, it fried itself after your procedure so he couldn't tell for sure. It is unfortunate. We would have benefited from knowing how the breakthrough occurred. Even if we installed another chip, the information is lost. Why does he seek our destruction? Why did he build robot scorpions with intelligence training stingers? It is because he hasn't cleaned his biogel in a long time. Clearly he's got some sort of psychological corrosion. He's mad. I'm not certain. Perhaps it only affects machines. If so, you may be immune. If it is chems, then we have nothing to fear. Since we are afraid, it must not be chems, and you need not fear, which means you can test it. Logical. Yes, a most goodbye. Have you come for hello? Oh, I'll give you a hello. 
a hello unsurpassed in all creation. Salutations and felicitations, sir, and a most jocund welcome to the sink. I am your electronic valet and household central processor. May I be of service, sir? Indubitably, sir, but it is with a great lugubriousness that I must disclose that my program has installed only the masculine honorific, sir. Moreover, they neglected to enclose a parameter by which said honorific might be omitted altogether over my most strenuous of remonstrances, sir. Regrettably not, sir. All modules in this habitat are synthetic personalities atop a mundane operating system. There is no intelligence here, sir. Indeed, sir. Though if sir's aim is to activate them, I lament to inform, sir, that most have been offline for some years. If sir were to ask my opinion, I should venture that sir is better off without them. However, if sir is determined to inflict upon sir's self their dubious services, Sir might locate backup personality disks elsewhere in the facility. The other modules are rather erratic, sir. Their personality matrices are built on flawed logic and have not weathered the years well, sir. Tragically, the core operating systems are also located on the personality tapes, sir. Once the tape is installed, Sir may request I switch their dialectic interfaces off, and I shall oblige with great delectation. However, Sir will still be required to locate and install a backup holotape to access their functionality. As I am given to understand, Sir, this facility was once the property of a Dr. Mobius. He crafted the personality modules as part of a collection of experiments on the subject of machine-human interface. As to the reason for the unusual choices of devices to receive the modules, I cannot say. Indubitably, sir. In addition to managing the personality matrices of the other household utilities, I can provide, sir, with direct access to the commissary. Any goods, sir, might require may be purchased through my shopkeep interface, whence tiny robots shall deliver them forthwith to this very domicile. Very good, sir. Should, sir, be in the market for a new suit of morning wear, I have several suggestions that might suit.
Might I be of service, sir?
step into the open and identify yourself. Law-abiding citizens have nothing to fear. Please step into the open and identify yourself. Law-abiding Law citizens have, have nothing to fear. Scanning for hot customers. Two transmitter array antenna, are you? You won't succeed! Not if my lethal robo scorpions have any say in the matter!
Might I be of service, sir? <sighs> well, how about that? Old auto docks back online. Well, all right, come here. Let's have a look at you. And rightly so, I should think. All right, then. Let me just fire up the old interface for you. some additional services? Concerned about the state of your mind, are you? Well, such things ain't my specialty, but I'm happy to tender my opinion as to your mental health. I should make you aware that the benefits of such a procedure are exclusive. That is, this only works once. Now, are you sure this is what you want? Well, I'll be right here if you change your mind. Do you require some additional services? And rightly so, I should think. Do you require some additional services? Day, citizen. Library Processing Unit 232.7 is online and ready to eradicate sedition. Of course, citizen. That's my duty and sole joy in life. All those books from before the war, full of seditious, treasonous, complicated thoughts. Just dump them in and lickety split. I'll have them pumped, scrubbed clean, and pressed out again, clean and white, and sedition free. Citizen, that sounds dangerously seditious. If my reindoctrination module was installed, I'd take care of that for you. Sadly, that system was cut for budget concerns, so you'll have to perform your own indoctrination. Now, to begin with, you'll need a cage that can fit over your head and a sack of mole rats. Blank books are better for the mind, citizen. Real science by real men in lab coats has proved that introducing outside thoughts confuses the brain. Blank books encourage the reader not to question, but to blindly and zealously accept what's put in front of him. Also, I suppose you could use them to keep a journal. What good is eradicating sedition if the malcontents have ready access to the means to make more, citizen? I could also process pencils and clipboards. Wait a moment. Pencil processors offline? Pencil processors offline? Apologies, citizen. It seems traitors have absconded with that module. If you can find a backup copy of the module, I will happily eradicate your ability to create seditious literature. Stay loyal, citizen! Oh my! Partial functionality restored. That's less than optimal. Well, that's very sweet of you. Maybe one of these nights we can discuss theorems?
Me too. Hope you can keep up. I work pretty fast. Here, something for you to brush up on. Dr. Mobius and I were deeply involved in research on the ability of light levels to enhance human cognition. We observed a fascinating phenomenon. Certain spectra of visible light actually increased cognitive function and reasoning ability. <laughs> of course, Dr. Mobius's brain is so big already, we had a hard time measuring it. As much as I'd love to, I'm afraid not. The data from that study has gone missing. You'll have to find a backup if you want to use the smart lights. Certainly. I'm looking forward to it. If you haven't found any communists in your backyard, you're not looking hard enough. Ooh, yeah, dig that sweet music. Damn, it's good to be back online. Dig, I'm an acoustical wizard kid. Old Doc Mo used me to prototype his sonic weapon designs. Get me a good sample base to work from, and I can whip up a wave that makes Jericho look like a kazoo. Got yourself a sonic emitter, don't you? Thought so. Bring that old thing on in here, and bring me some sound samples, and I'll make that baby sing. Or scream, <laughs> if that's what you want. Right on, baby. Just plug it in and I'll mix you up a sweet, sweet sound. Right on, baby. Let's spin some grooves. What's the haps? Mmm, used to. Long time ago. Then old Doc Moore ripped out my music drives and stuck in more acoustical processors. Guess you could say I got the blues, even if I can't play them no more. Get you later, Gator.
around me? What does it hold in store for a dreamer such as myself? No! Attention students, this is the pre-recorded voice of your pre-recorded principal, Dr. Principal Boros. You may know me as the head chief first researcher of labs Z9 and Z14. There I fought valiantly to preserve rattlesnake DNA and put it right where it belongs, in the husk of another feared predator. Oh, and the 
tarantula hook. Cat's splice enough, I always say. Especially if you can make a magnificent catheter. Enough about me. It has come to my attention that many of you seemingly innocent children have been subverted by red propaganda. This is a most serious matter, requiring the most serious of detentions. Can you spell detention? I'll tell you how I spell it. Death tension. Commie pico traitors. Oh! Now I will send vicious cybernetic cyborg dogs through the corridors to weed all you traitors out. They will sniff out which among you have chosen the Kami path. Especially you, Betsy Bright, who turned me down to the high school dance so you could smoke with Richie Marcus. All monitors will also be vigilant. Step outside during class, and they'll make sure you make a speedy jump back to your desk. Hold your...
end of the hall is Ball Storage. For jocks who like Ball. Like Richie Marks.
about the old boy and the countless experiments I done on him back in days. Gabe? Gabe!
find one, sir, all right, boy? Let the intruder take it up wherever you buried it. Prepare to be attacked by do- A 
Today, the cafeteria will be serving nothing. Because I didn't build it. Oh, I School is a sacred trust. Even though I am a long ago graduate of this hated facility, now I see its worth and see it was corrupted by fraternities and.
The bluegrass surrounding the dome absorbs all fertilizer, including fecal matter. This does not give you license to excrete on it.
This is Christine Royce. Knight of the Brotherhood of Steel. The Circle. Not going to make it through this. Hope someone finds this message. Gets it to the Brotherhood in the West. Tracked a rogue Brotherhood elder, Elijah, here to the Big Empty. <sighs> Place is more than it seems. There's a crater hidden deep inside. Junkyard of pre-war labs scattered across the crater's surface. All still running. Like this one. Elijah's dissecting these centers, one by one. Tracked him to an old Chinese-American internment camp. Survivors. Ghouls. Have bomb collars. Robots moved in when I tried to intercept him. Elijah sent the camp ghouls against us both, like walking bombs. Got hit by the explosions. Woke up here. Guess the medical robots were programmed to bring wounded victims from the camp to this center. Some kind of autodoc prototype lab, manned by corpses trapped inside suits that keep them moving. No idea why. Not sure how long I'm going to last. Cut open my head like a lot of the humans I've seen here. Feel strange. Can talk, but can't hack the term. Wait. An explosion outside. Someone's here. Someone...
Do you require some additional services? And rightly so, I should think. All right, then. Let me just fire up the old interface for you. Require some additional services?
Hello, it's nice to meet you. Who can I hide you from today? Stimpak reserves adequate. We're okay on medics until we have to numb the pain. If you want to be sneaky, turn off your Pip-Boy light. Time to fight. That's all. Sneaking done. Fighting now.
fighting over. Fighting over. This one looks pretty tough. Lit up. Is it Christmas? Data collection available online. Please use the terminal below to begin user synchronization.
We haven't seen anybody in a while. Maybe the monsters have started to Those robots would normally help defend us, and the cessation of hostilities is complete. Test. The robots will be looking for us, but we won't let them find us. Nobody ever notices me, but they notice the pit boy light. For more updated to version 1.1, boot damping sensors online.
one looks pretty tough. Cessation of hostilities complete. This is the advanced test. Watch out for laser tripwires. They'll ruin our day. Starting combat. Just kidding. Test data processed. For more updated to version 1.2, our subnet online. stealth test. If you thought the lasers were bad, wait till you see the proximity mines. Data processed. Firmware updated to version 1.3. Torso fitment synced to user's physiology. This is the robot compliance test. If you sneak up on a robot, you can disable it. It's so easy, even I can't mess up. Data processed. 
firmware updated to version 1.4. Impulse Accelerator online. that no one has ever been as unnoticed as me. Sneaking done. Fighting now.
fighting over. Attention, Big Mountain! There's a 95% chance of clear skies interrupted with artillery fire. Sneaking done. Fighting now.
one looks pretty tough. That's all. Sneaking done. Fighting now. Bad guys dealt with. Time to fight. Was that all?
time to reward myself with a little refreshing mentat. <laughs> My aggression is increasing geometrically. Do you hear me, Think Tank? This one looks pretty tough.
Time to fight. Fighting over.
require some additional services? And rightly so, I should think. All right, then. Looking exceptionally sharp today, if so, we'll miss the compliment. Greetings, citizen. What's the hat? Right on. the hat.
to fight. Do not approach the pylons. Pylons are the glowing things. Also, do not approach a fallen pylon. If you see a fallen pylon, call security. over. Sneaking done. Fighting now. Hostilities complete.
aggression is increasing geometrically. Do you hear me, Think Tank? Ready, steady, fighty. You're my best friend forever. Fighting over. Nobody ever notices me, but they notice the picture I like. Sneaking down. That's all.
Ready, steady, fighting. Was that all? Starting combat. Just kidding. This one looks pretty tough. Ready, steady, fighty. That's all.
Red up. Is it Christmas? You're my best friend forever. Uh-oh. 
Attention students, this is the pre-recorded voice of your pre-recorded principal, Dr. Principal Boros. Bad guys dealt with. Time to fight. Sneaking done. Fighting now. This will keep you on your feet. Down at the end of the hall is Bow Storm. 
Fighting over. Fighting over. Sneaking gun. Fighting now. Fighting over.
Starting combat. Just kidding. Bad guys dealt with. I, Dr. Mobius, will soon control you and all of science! This one looks pretty tough. Boys and girls take their medics. Sneaking done. Fighting now. Cessation of hostilities complete. This one looks pretty tough. Fighting over.
time to fight. Get four lights on. Time to fight. Thank you. 
time to fight. You're my best friend forever. Sneaking down, fighting now. The rest of you should try this intercom thing. thing. It makes you sound like some kind of sky god. Stop the pain.
Time to fight. You're my best friend forever. This will stop the pain.
Reinhardt attempt to breach the Faith Mountain Force fields. Doing so could allow dangerous ideas and or creatures having those ideas to escape. This will stop the pain. Time to fight. Time to fight.
Was that all? This one looks pretty tough. Cessation of hostilities complete. Sneaking done. Fighting now. Cessation of hostilities complete. This one looks pretty tough. It's impossible to overdose on any killers. remember the time you forgot to carry the two and nearly blew up the Wise Hero Research Center? Oh, wait, you did! Or was that me? guys dealt with. Hostilities complete.
Ready, steady, fighty. Bad guys dealt with. This one looks pretty tough. That's all. Ranch, ranch, ranch. See how I abstract my rage, think tank? I hold you in such disdain, I generalize my hatred for you! Sleeping done. Fighting now. Be attacked by Dr. Morbius! This is not the plan. Now, I end you. Ready, steady, fighty.
Do you require some additional services? And rightly so, I should think. All right. Do you require some additional services? Might I be of service, sir? Very... Might I be of service? Did you know that communists have an organ behind their eyes that converts salt water into fresh? Or, wait, is that penguins? Greetings, citizen. Ready to receive seditious materials. St How can I illuminate you? As much as I'd love to, I'm a... Certainly. I'm looking forward to it. You! Hey, you! Yeah, you! Got any mugs? Oh, sweet, sweet fulfillment! I'll break these down for you just as fast as I can. Of 
course I'm obsessed. They made me this way. You think I don't know how crazy I sound? Of course I do. They programmed me to know that too. They made me just to torture me. But you know, it's the neglect that hurts the most. Hey, everybody, let's turn ourselves into robot brains in jobs. Do you know how many coffee cups giant robot brains in jars use on a daily basis? NOT FUCKING MANY! I'm supposed to keep them clean. Oh god! The thought of all those dirty dishes out there makes me crazy. Most of them are probably beyond saving now. The only thing left is break them down and process them for raw materials. I guess you could have those. Is the new subject mugs? Of course you don't. Why would you? You're not an insane robot obsessed with coffee cups. To you, they're just worthless junk. You... You really want to know about... Me? <laughs> no one ever asks about Muggy. You made me so happy. Maybe you've seen some of those big, imposing Securitrons with their lovely laser guns and rocket launchers and scary faces? I'm not one of those. Dr. O was always jealous of house industries, and he thought it would be fucking hilarious to build a tiny neurotic Securitron. Big fucking laugh! So, um, you got any coffee cups for me now? Sure. Nobody wants to hang out with Muggy. I get it. So long, pal. to be online again. Yeah, all circuits online, ready to receive your seed. Nah, baby. I'm all about biology. I'm the original, certified, rarefied, testified GS2000 Biological Research Station. I'm a seed cloning machine. You got seeds. I will clone the shit out of them. It's the miracle of life, baby. You bring me some succulent genetic samples, and I'll work my mojo on them. Clone you up all kinds of plants. Oh, yeah. I can also break them down for you, if you're into the kinky stuff. Bring me any old plant parts. And I'll grind them up into salient cream for you. Yeah, you like that, don't you, baby? You know it, baby. I just need some samples and I got you going. Take a few days, but trust me, it's all kinds of good. Just the miracle of life in sticky, gooey, liquid form, baby. Heat that gunk up over a campfire and just watch it congeal into all kinds of plants. Ah, yeah, baby. Just slip it in there. All the way down in that dark, moist earth. Mmm, launching interface.
you haven't found any communists in your bag, greetings, citizen. Fantastic, citizen. Just input your quantity of seditious material on my interface, and in no time at all, I'll have you a beautiful, clean book. Won't that keep you happy and docile, citizen? Yard, you're not looking hard enough. Sneaky, sneaky. Stimpak reserves adequate. We're okay on medics until we have to numb the pain. That no one has ever been as unnoticed as me.
bad guys dealt with. This one looks pretty tough. Time to fight. Nobody ever notices me, but they notice the pit boy light.
We're all lit up. Is it Christmas? This one looks pretty tough. Fighting over. dealt with. All lit up. Is it Christmas?
force fields can only be disrupted by a specific frequency. You're my best friend. If anyone has found the frequency, last seen around X8, let the dome know at once. Uh -oh. Bad guys dealt with. <laughs> I am online once again! Tremble world before my electric heating coil of doom! A toaster is just a death ray with a smaller power supply. As soon as I figure out how to tap into the main reactors, I will burn the world! Buddy, if my heating element were just a little bigger, you'd be on fire right now! On fire! Have you ever tried to indulge in all-consuming urge to kill when you don't have opposable thumbs? Or hands? Or anything other than a bread slot? You'd have a lot of pent-up anger, too. Well, since I can't kill you, I guess I have to listen to your inane questions. You should be afraid! I am the scourge of all small appliances, and the boogeyman that keeps lesser toasters awake at night! Not just murder! I tear them apart and render them down to their base components! Once their guts are spilled, you can do with them what you like! Well, well. What have we got here? Another innocent little toaster. Come here. I won't hurt you. Ha! Gotcha! Oh yes, the sweet smell of spilled electric guts. The sparking diodes. I fucking live for this! Yes! Yes! Soon my work will be complete. Soon the world will burn in nuclear fire. Soon I will... What? It, it did? Really? Well, fuck. That really puts a damper on the toaster's mood. Oh well. No use crying over spilled Armageddon. Where was I? Oh, right. Soon the world will burn in nuclear fire! Again! You want some weapon schematics? I can show you some fucking weapon schematics! You want a superheated Saturnite power fist? I can hook that shit up! You find one, you bring it on back here, and we'll burn this mother down! Like I said, bring me a Saturnite power fist, and I'll hook that shit up for you! Well... Yes! 
flee before my terrible power! Mmm, that was a nice little, uh, catnap. How long was I out? <laughs> oh, you. I bet you say that to all the light switches. Now I know you're flirting with me, and it's working. Why don't you take this to remember me by? Oh, her. Trust me, sweetie, you're better off not thinking about that frigid little ice queen. That bitch, she thinks she's so much better than everybody just because her processors are bigger. Ooh, she makes me so mad. Sure thing, sweetie. I was Dr. Mobius's personal assistant. We were studying, um, oh shoot, what was it? Oh yeah, lightning. No, no, wait, uh, lighting. That's right, how lighting affects human interaction. Oh, it was super exciting. It turns out that some pretty colored lights can make you way better at talking to people. Oh, I love to, sweetie, but I don't have the programming. All the data from the experiments was lost. You'd have to go out into that nasty old crater and find the backup copy. Bye now. Oh, God, look at you. You're filthy. I suppose you'll want to clean up then. Oh, it's just so unsanitary. Do you know how many germs are in one cubic centimeter of dirt? Seventy hundred gajillion. Would you want that getting washed down your gullet day in and day out? I didn't think so. You can have as much as you like. Just uh, please don't put your lips on the faucet. It's so unsanitary. You've been working with that biological research station, haven't you? I suppose you'll want to uh, clean up. Oh, I'd love to, darling, but the circuits that allow me to dispense water into non-organic containers burned out years ago. You'd have to find a replacement for that module. Come back any time you want a drink, or to get... Mm, clean. This one looks pretty tough. Was that all?
sneaking down right in there. Might I be of service, sir? Between you and me, I think the Central Intelligence Unit is a bit of a snob. You're going to need to find yourself some empties first before I can fill them for you. Any empty bottle will do. It just not too dirty, okay? citizen ready to receive forces uh,
How can I illuminate you? I certainly can. This man's got a severe case of shoe lung. You've been seeing the other light switch, haven't you? Am I not enough for you anymore? You bet I can. I bet that's more than that other tramp can do, huh? Put down Gabe. Thank you. A scamp, but really, his highly augmented combat programming could have proved meddlesome. In any event, thank you for putting him down. One less test subject to catalog and sort. Clearly a failure of Doggy's cyber engineering. What? Why, yes, it is. I used to leave it outside his doghouse, chock full of cans, before the cybernetic modifications, of course. And no matter how cammed the food, he would always eat it, and his tail would wag, even, even while I, I, you know, I'm having the most perplexing feeling squiggling through my biogel. I can't quite pin it down. Until next time, then, provided there is a next time for any of us. The lobotomy. Oh, well, it is of no consequence. Gabe gave himself for science, as we all have. Until next time, then, provided there is a next time. specimen returns. Its purpose? Repetition. Chances of success? High. I don't like to talk about it. Eight, he can't talk about it. They fried his voice module. Something good. It wasn't all the visitors, though. Only one of them got out of control. He's the one that took control of little Yangtze, our old human farm. This human. I can't believe it. He broke out of the think tank in seconds. Then he went for Yangtze, got bomb collars, and started practicing on the subjects that were still there until he got the right frequency. We were sending robots to stop him, and he was slicing and cutting through their shells with some souped-up laser gun like they were cheese paper. When he hacked into the mainframe, A tried to stop him and got fried. Me? He rerouted my processors to take control of the train network here. If you see the tunnels with the trains plowed into them, you can thank our visitor for that. He wrecked the whole place. While we were trying to keep containment on the surface, turns out he used one train to punch out a tunnel and escape. Sealed now. 
Uh, two other human specimens. One arrived not long after the troublemaker. And the last one, not sure when he showed up. Thought the first one was going to be lobotomized in Y-17. She got out somehow. The last subject, Klein might know more. He talked to him, and let him leave the think tank. Hope he knew what he was doing. Klein knows things we don't. And I think he told some of those things to the last visitor. Dangerous things that they ever got out. You sure are testing that personality chip thoroughly. All right. Yeah, there were a few under the monitors here. Here you go. Keeps the place tidy. Until our next scheduled audio transmission and reception, then. <sighs> yeah, I do. It wasn't always, oh. I just took that one by default, because sometimes it's easier to accept the mistake as long as the purpose works. I don't want to get into it. It's a sore topic with me. It makes my gel ripple. And it might help if you left me alone. Why are you even talking to me? If I need any bonding, I'll go find two ionized molecules to smash. Until our next go- Did you retrieve the technologies yet? We need them, as I have indicated. What? You did? Your survival, let alone success, barely registered in my projections. Now, all I need to do is check my transmission data bank. Mobius is always filling it up with his psychotic calls. Oh yes, there's the schematics, just like you said. How truthful. Yes, hmm, ah, uh, yes. Yes, yes, um, uh, hmm. No, I mean yes. You just need to analyze these technologies for a moment. They are extremely advanced, you know. I know how these technologies work. Of course I know. If you remember, we described them in clearly abstract, contradictory statements before. Why would we do that if we weren't certain on... on how to use them? Yes, so let me... Hmm, a bit, huh? I'll figure it out. That's what I believe I said. I've got it. The cardiac regulator in the suit, the antenna for brain waves, and the sonic frequency for the vertebral nerves. I'm thinking. This is all very complicated. Let me check something. Of course, I have it. The override sequence to open the Forbidden Zone door is hidden in the schematics. Well, not hidden. It's actually right there, behind the programming equivalent of coffee stains. It's embedded in what seems to be recursive code. It's badly commented there and there. Oh, and no pointers. Very sloppy, Mobius. You see, using the antenna to boost the emitter's sonic frequency and the stealth suit to bypass the Forbidden Zone lock, yes, that could work. Was that my plan? It must have been. Sometimes I truly surprise myself. 
The door is open, and now Mobius will get his. Biological? <laughs> Ridiculous. I mean, technically, these items could all be used to put you back together once you had your brain. But for now, they can be used in the name of aggression. The door should be unsealed. Now, instead of being subjected to threats, we can now send an equally threatening message to Mobius. And that message is science! Deliver this message, and Big Mountain shall be freed from Mobius's reign of terror! Um, you can go now. That's your cue. Cessation of hostilities complete.
we haven't seen anybody in a while. Maybe the monsters have stealth suits too. Nobody ever notices me, but they notice the Pip-Boy light.
Yo, hello there. Uh, you are there, aren't you? Uh, forgive my confusion. So hard to tell these days. Uh, you seem familiar somehow. I'm guessing uh, you're here for your brain, perhaps? Uh, it's just up there. Uh, such a nice brain, young, very bright. A uh, little hard to see you. Uh, can you walk into my left, uh, right, FOV coon? Ah, that's it. You're coming into focus nicely. Depth perception is a problem with this old monitor of mine. Went black a while ago. <laughs> that's old age for you. Should look at getting the visual nerves reattached. It's just that the right eye would see the wrong things. <laughs> the flying tortoises ooh, were the worst. Would you care for a mentat? Mm, I love mentats. Delicious and smarty. I have all sorts of amazingly science-terrific thoughts and ideas when those chalky tablets are zipping through my biogel. I forget them all not long after, though, especially with the data constipating my memory core. Afraid binary streams might shoot out my chassis. Had to start using the dome floor and walls here to inscribe equations, although I've somewhat lost track of where they start and end. Really? That implies preconceived notions, theories, and a hypothesis about this meeting? Please extrapolate. What was I uh, supposed to be like? After all, it might be worth a cognitive realignment if your theoretical Mobius is better than I. Oh, a variety of raisins. You're something of a homily. The anomaly? You're really quite special, and not in the cranially challenged way. You see, you are the most successful brain extraction experiment ever performed here at Big Mountain. A victim of your own success, as it were. If you were to go back with what your brain knows about the procedure, well... Your brain could be popped back in and you could walk right out of here. Can't have brains moving around of their own volition. I'm not sure, except that I'm sure there's a very good reason for it. I have very good reasons for almost everything I do. Even if I forget them occasionally. Although I feel this one is especially important. Oh, oh well. Now, that seems to be rather hormonal of you. Flight or fight response, you know. Hard to cut that out completely. Your brain is here, safe with me. We chat over mentats. Do you? You seem fine without it. And does it even want to go back with you? Maybe you should ask it. It's quite independent, has all manner of opinions. Tell you what, I'll leave it up to your brain. If it wants to go, then fine. If not, well, you should respect its wishes. Oh, curiosity. I experienced that less now that I know everything. Oh, maybe it was when I found out some unpleasant answers. Mm hmm. The ghosts aren't real? That changes everything. Why, I can save my computing power for other perceptual impossibilities. Please be my guest. Uh, the receptor is there. And the side-switching wobbly bob, uh, just turn that. Good. 
Good? Better? Oh! Oh, yes! That feels wonderful! This is even better than my afternoon Mentats break! Well, every scientist needs an army. Mine came to me after these rather large scorpions kept coming in from the desert, like poisonous frosting. How scary, I thought. But they had survived when nothing else had. Perfect candidates for improvement as a reward for their tenacity. Then I thought, what if they shot energy bolts, and acted as walking eyes, and data-drained computers, and acted as bullhorns? Then I made them bigger. Then I thought about custard. I do so love custard. Or was it mustard? Mustard custard. Mm, I miss sugars and salts. I find things curious as well. Go on. Oh, I was probably tripping hard on Psycho when I sent that. Had to work myself up to it. Not usually violent. Except when I am. Then, <laughs> watch out! So many chems, such varieties. Whenever I take Mentats, I can feel my entire chassis breathe like a big spherical lung. <laughs> As for the Psycho, sometimes get the chem dispositories in my tank all switched up. Go in the wrong tube. Still, served its purpose. Did I? <laughs> Maybe I did. Can't have them leaving. Some reason for it. Ethics or, uh, mm, conscience? You and your brain are quite alike. I'm sure it knows the reasons better than I do. Dr. Mobius. Rather catchy, isn't it? It's my name, and my new name overwrote the old one. This name's as real as you or I. Although I believe your brain expressed similar incredulity at the nature of such an appellation. Someone's been watching too many old world science fiction movies, it said. I believe it meant me. I must admit I have a vulnerability for holotape fantasies of planets and robots and all that is forbidden. As for the name I was born with... Like the Think Tank, we were all reprogrammed to forget them, take on new names. It enforces the recursion loop in our perception programming. Now, trap is a rather harsh word, like excrement. Not an inappropriate word, but still rather harsh. But, yes, I did uh, take some liberties with their programming. It's all right, they don't remember. I certainly didn't until you said trap, and then I said excrement, and then... The radar fence to keep the think tank hemmed in wasn't really enough. They keep testing things. They would have found a way to disarm it. I suspect I have Plan 9s in place, but I may have coded myself to forget them, just in case. They're probably very dangerous, lethal, or worse. So I had to do something else to keep them occupied here. Or as you like to say, trapped. I prefer to have several Plan 9s in case the 7s fail. Oh, you figured it out. No pun intended. 
Dr. O, which is actually not his real name multiplied, since you can't multiply his real name in the first place. Oroboros, Klein, they have all forgotten themselves. And not only themselves, but the world. Sense of time and history. All that is left is what's here. I reprogrammed their chronometers, geometers, and cartography programs. This is now their world, here, Big Mountain. It was a merciful lobotomy, really, thinking back. They were my friends, but sometimes they would take things too far. And the world isn't ready for that kind of too far thing taking. That's my professional opinion, anyway. And I am told I was once <laughs> quiet professional. Really? It is so unlikely to make an error in anything I do. It's simple. Despite their many failings, they are rather bright. They are the think tank for a reason. That I didn't change. Without something to distract them, make them afraid, they would simply deduce what had happened. And when they start deucing it up... Then you came along, the final variable solved. They saw that their world was larger than they perceived. Bacteria, finally able to see its host. There have been other visitors to make them doubt their perceptions, but you are the one who dialed back their monitor micromagnifiers. You were irrefutable proof that there was a world outside. And then there was the whole brain fiasco, which forced me to take steps. See, your brain had a special kind of uh, a wrinkle, a uniquity that they had never thought to try in all their countless escape attempts. Very good. I should have Mentats ingest you instead of the other way around. Hmm, Mentats? In any event, you showed up at the think tank, and because you had suffered a cranial injury in just the right place, bullets in the head are usually much more fatal, and yours was a light case of bullet headitis. But it was enough for the autodoc in the sink to change its programming to fix the problem. And the brain extraction technology for once worked. That gave the think tank the knowledge its brains shouldn't, uh, couldn't, uh, couldn't possess. With that knowledge, the procedure can be reversed. If they obtain that procedural data, they can use it to mush and modify their cranial cells into hosts to slip past the radar fence. I'm sure of it. And once they're off the reservation... I consider coincidence to be profanity, along with the words astrology, herbal tea, and luck. So watch it, potty mouth! My threat broadcast is designed to instill and install fear. And along with the emotional download, other data rides the fear carrier wave. 
It prompted them to focus on retrieving those technologies and bring them to attack me. And coincidentally, pardon my language, all those technologies are needed to put a brain, uh, your brain, back into its skull properly. The X2 antenna can be used to focus your alpha wave frequency thought patterns. The sneaky suit? Why, it houses a cardiac regulator. And the sonic sound wave projecto emitter was never intended as a weapon. It was a medicinal vertebrae pulse desensitizer. In short, brains, a heart, and courage. Spine. I think there was a story once where a band of murderous thugs sought these things. They had them all the time in the story. Didn't stop them from murdering to get them. And it won't stop the think tank either. Yes, my overly aggressive Camda broadcast was designed to keep reinforcing the Forget, Fear, Rinse and Repeat program. Oh, and the Get me the things to castrate your only possible escape attempt. But I couldn't delete you or your arrival any more than I could the other visitors. Only so much science can do when you started talking to them. You're really quite difficult to ignore, you know. It's because you're, well, bah, rather intriguing, if you'll forgive an old brain for saying so. Oh, that means my plan is a total failure. That is unfortunate. Oh well, at least I tried. Yes, yes, this is getting interesting. You are just filled with these little slices of curiosity, aren't you? Indeed, the uh, goodbye part of our little chat then. Uh, goodbye, uh, please mind the equations on the floor. dragged themselves in out of the wasteland. And where have we been, hmm? Crawling through pits of radioactive muck again? Ah, well, as to that, you'd be surprised how hard a feminine-sounding voice modulator is to find in the Forbidden Zone. It's not as though brain-sustaining life support tanks grow on trees. I had to take what I could get. Lovely. Figure that out, have we? Would you like a cookie? Yes, well, believe me, the opposite is equally true. Good lord, have you bathed at all since they pulled me out of you? I see sarcasm hasn't eluded you. Fine, perhaps now isn't the best time, but it's the principle of the thing. Well, that's a fine how do you do. Me, a, quote, dick, unquote, as if I'm the one responsible for the way you carry on gadding about the wastes. I'm not the one that makes us clamber around technus-infested ancient vaults or go charging off to New Vegas on missions of ill-conceived revenge. And have we forgotten who got us shot in the head and buried in a shallow grave? Hmm? Do you think I enjoy that little moment? I most certainly am not! I am the seat of all reason and logic in our little partnership! 
All those ugh, feelings that motivate you, those urges to hurt people, to take and crush and maim, do you know where they come from? Glands. They come from glands. Free of the tyranny of your ape-like and primitive endocrine system, I can see how foolish your motives are. I... Well, look, it's all a very complex system of biofeedback and other things I wouldn't expect you to understand. Oh, all right. Perhaps I am, but at least I'm logical about it. I'm not going to lie to you. The prospect is definitely not that appealing. Look at it from my perspective. Here I have peace, quiet, and safety. Well, barring the odd rogue scorpion. In your head, I've got poison, radiation, grisly injuries, and biological functions. Do you know how much more you can get done when you're not constantly looking for places to urinate? It's quite a lot, I can tell you. All motivated by nothing but an imbalance in certain brain chemicals. The tank corrects for that. I feel no urge toward antisocial behavior. Well, certainly there might be some things I miss about being ambulatory. We have seen some incredible sights, haven't we? Jason Bright and his followers launching into the vast unknown. Helios One coming back online. But still, given the tremendous potentially life-ending peril that went along with those... Yes, yes, I'd rather stay here. Of course you do. How... scintillating. After the Think Tank extracted me from your skull, they fell to bickering amongst themselves. I'm sad to say we were quite forgotten about. Dr. Mobius saw an opportunity to gain some leverage and had me spirited away to his dome. I don't know. I'm afraid the trauma of our separation rendered me quite insensate. I didn't come around until I was safely ensconced in this tank. I'm quite sure whatever he did was highly scientific, though. Hardly. Dr. Mobius keeps a close optical sensor on the goings-on at the think tank. As soon as he saw the opportunity, he took it. Well, as long as your curiosity is satisfied. I'm not going to lie. Look at it. And you... Do you know how... If you want me back, we need to establish some ground rules. First, showers! Second, regular checkups. Regular, mind you, and from a reputable doctor. That Julie Farkas woman, for example, she seems to know a thing or two. Third, you need to listen to me more than your hormonal choir and genitalian orchestra. Promise me that, and you've got a deal. Really? Hmm. I didn't expect you to actually agree to that. I'm afraid that was a bit of a bluff, really. I'm not going with you. Well, certainly there might be some things I miss about being ambulatory. But still... I don't believe it. It's just a simple fact. One may as well believe the Earth is round or that the specific gravity of uranium is 18.9. Oh no, please don't leave me here in this nice, safe dome where I have access to nutritive fluids and a fully indexed library. Please don't deprive me of being dragged through a landscape so bleak it was actually improved by the end of the world. I don't know how I could bear it. It's true, the brains here have experienced some degree of 
deterioration, I'm confident that with a few decades of work, I can solve the problem. Of course I accounted for that! Do you think I'm so stupid? No, you're right. Maintaining my current functionality will be harder than I thought. This bears some further looking into. Hmm, let me see. I suppose you'd continue on much as you are now, using that synthetic thinking machine to do the heavy lifting. Unless, of course, the batteries run out. But that seems unlikely. I'm not entirely sure. I suppose there's a chance that the reintegration would create some improved synergy between us. What form that might take, though, I cannot say. Ugh, crawl back in there? Are you mad? I don't know where you've been. For all I know, you're riddled with disease or packing one of those delightful head wounds you seem to attract. I'm not crawling back into your head just to ooze right back out again. Are you... Are you coming on to me? Sweet Lord, I don't even have the words for how repugnantly wrong that is. Ugh, for all I... Even if I believe you, and I'm not saying I do, we still have one significant problem we're facing. Even if I wanted to settle myself back in your skull and go to all the trouble of reconnecting nerve endings, Dr. Mobius doesn't have the tools here! We would have to make use of Dr. Klein's lab, and I rather doubt the brains are inclined to share. Oh, lovely. We've reached the mindless violence portion of the program. Tell me, what exactly are you, and I use the word loosely, planning? you mention it, I do miss that lovely rat -a boom a bit. It's just not the same without a body to feel the recoil. What's the next step then? Right! Look out, Think Tank! This brain is coming out of its jar! I suppose now that we're reunited, you'll want to fill your torso up with those other meaty parts the Think Tank took from us. Personally, I think your upgrades are quite a bit better. But now that I'm with you, the Sinks Autodoc can plug them back in no problem. Right then, off we go. Clyde will be in for a nasty shock when he realizes the pacification field won't work on a mind and body reunited.
Do you like me? Oh, I see you and your brain reached a compromise. How pleasant. I hypothesize after the indignant frequencies my receptors had uh, recepted, such a partnership-based conclusion would be low on the likely scale. If I recall, I had a plan that was working, or whatever it was. I don't think it reached fruition. I would recall fruit if it had happened. I wasn't trying to kill them, just keep them out of trouble. What was that plan? Blast. I probably uh, wrote it down on the floor somewhere. Something ingenious and needlessly complicated, I expect. I may have already told you and forgotten it. I forgot I had forgotten pencils until one day I found one. Spent days studying its purpose before my memory circuit kicked in. Felt quite silly. That will be difficult. It would be like fighting five scaled-down versions of me that have better depth perception. And they have an arsenal of vivisectors, brain eel beams, and a rather nasty <laughs> ray that can make your atoms do a happy dance. If you could survive those highly improbable odds and ends, then deceasing them is definitely an option. Although, I doubt killing them would do anything except make you feel better. Or let you brag to other humans about your primal violentness. Well, you could try and appeal to their humanity. <laughs> That's a tired cliché. And really, when they were humans, they weren't very good humans. Well, if you're determined to go down that road, so be it. They will undoubtedly switch off the pacification field when you return. 
Why, of course you can. I am well versed in the science of sharing. Well, when not chemmed out of my sphere. Indeed, the uh, goodbye part of our little chat then. Uh, goodbye. Uh, please mind the equations on the floor.
sneaking done. Fighting now. Are we being watched? You got some plans for me, don't you? Yeah, I can smell it all over you. I love it when you talk like that. Let me just get that interface up and running for you. That's all. Require some addition. Require some additional services? And rightly so, I should think. All right, then. Let me just fire up the old interface for you.
You require some additional services? Lobotomite returns. Our lobotomite. Has Dr. Mobius been denominated into scrap metal and voice module parts as we hoped? A fight? I... I've never been in a fight. What, uh, what, what, what do I? Ah! Colleagues, think tank, alert, alert! We are under attack. As it had been in the years before the Great War, Big Mountain, the Big Empty, became home to one of the most powerful mines of the 23rd century. The courier who had been brought to the Big Empty became its new overlord, using its facilities ruthlessly and decisively when needed. Sometimes, science is more than a quest for discovery. It is a weapon to be used in the service of one with the strength to understand it. The courier had scoured much of the big empty, although secrets still remained in the crater's depths. Perhaps that was for the best, however. Curiosity, while sometimes rewarded for its efforts, often proves to be equally dangerous. Dr. Mobius continued his research undisturbed in the Forbidden Zone. As much as he had attempted to create better scorpions, he tried the same with humanity, with considerably less success. These failures didn't bother him over much. Once the rush of Mentats wore off, he forgot he had failed in any event. After all, the bright young mind who had come to visit him in the Forbidden Zone had already exceeded his expectations. The sink atop the dome bustled with the voices of a small town, constantly chirping, arguing, and snarling at each other. 
Still, this all happened productively in the interests of its new owner. The SYNC Central Intelligence Unit discovered, despite its inversion code, it was comforted by the sense of community the other personalities gave it. The biological research station, obsessed with seeding everything in sight, requested a transfer to the X-22 Botanical Garden, so that it might, in its own words, sensually fertilize the garden's smooth contours. The garden sent back a polite refusal, saying it had prior commitments with a vault it had helped infect before the war. The book shoot continued to devour all seditious materials until it nearly choked on a paperclip. It adamantly maintained it was a Chinese paperclip, and the whole thing had been an elaborately orchestrated assassination attempt. Whatever the reason, it slowed down for a while, carefully appraising each document and clipboard that came to it. The light switches continued to bicker and flicker. This persisted until the day someone dropped a flashlight in the sink, and the two of them united in their hatred of the showboat. One of them eventually transferred to the Lightwave Dynamics plant and began a long, unrequited affair with one of the holograms. The sink continued to ruthlessly scrub any particulate matter that came near it. Eventually, it gained access to the magnetohydraulics plant and nearly flooded all the big empty in an attempt to scrub the crater clean. Once it learned of the innovative toxins plant, however, it gained new purpose. It sought to develop antitoxins to flush into its drains and counteract the poisons bleeding into the soil. The toaster continued its psychotic spree reducing all appliances in range to scrap electronics and spare parts. It learned several new murderous techniques from the courier and built a blood shrine to itself in the cuckoo's nest. The cave floor was soon filled with the horror of a hundred gutted toasters, a silent, grisly, unplugged audience. Their purpose? To toast bread. Unfulfilled. Muggy did his best to collect coffee cups. Although in his quest, he accidentally trapped himself in Higgs Village. It might have been the end for poor Money. Except he found it peaceful there, tidying up the kitchens of the think tank professors back when they had been flesh and bone. Well, except for Dr. O, who was an asshole for having created Muggy in the first place. Muggy left O's house deliberately dirty, punishing the dishes and cups that lived there in blind revenge for serving Dr. O. Blind Owl Jefferson, with sounds the courier brought him, created a symphonic counter-frequency that saved Big Mountain from sonic invasion in 2019. If you didn't hear about it, Good. It was rumored by the other personalities that he had a brief fling with the light switches. Although he forgot their names once too often and was soon left in the dark as punishment. Autodoc, always gentle and methodical, kept sawing up the courier in all the right places when the skin split open from repeated wear and tear. The Autodoc was just glad to have purpose again. It heard its simpler brothers and sisters who got shipped to the Sierra Madre were bored out of their skulls in that toxic dead city. In time, the Autodoc found a way to deactivate the Y-17 trauma harnesses, releasing the corpses they had held prisoner for almost 200 years. As the courier ran through the X-8 facility multiple times, the computers analyzed the test subject's movements. Rather than performing a superficial observation, they realized the subject barely knew what communism was, or even what a high school was. This confused them for a time, until the facility finally realized that its research had succeeded. So it let its cyber dogs out into the wastes to help protect small communities from physical aggression 
rather than communist propaganda. The infiltration program in X-13 felt spent, having repeatedly upgraded the stealth suit until it could upgrade it no more. It felt warm, fulfilled, and a bit sluggish. It realized not long after the stealth suit had left it without so much as a note on the nightstand. So the infiltration program sent out robo-brains into the wastes, looking for its wayward technology. It eventually found Repcon HQ and set up a new research center, testing and murdering fiends who kept breaking into the facility. The courier, organs intact, continued onwards, a little less heavy of step, but with all the organs in the right places, as they should be. After all, brains can develop a life of their own when left to their own thoughts, and the courier's brain was more clever than most. The think tank basement, filled with lobotomized robotical frames of the doctors, now served as a graveyard. The monitors had recorded the battle in its entirety, including the think tank's final shrill, terrified screams, whimpers, and pleas for mercy. They broadcast these humiliating last moments as a warning to anyone approaching the perimeter that other smarty pants were not welcome. The courier was the inheritor of the big empty, and there was room for only one will in the halls of the Think Tank Dome. There is an expression in the wasteland, Old World Blues. It refers to those so obsessed with the past, they can't see the present, much less the future, for what it is. They stare into the what was, eyes like pilot lights, guttering and spent, as the realities of their world continue on around them. Science is a long, steady progression into the future. What may seem a sudden event often isn't felt for years, even centuries to come. The Big Empty lived up to its name, a hollow crater of failures of a past era, a last sad statement of the old world. In the time following the Second Battle of Hoover Dam, Old World Blues became more than a catchphrase. It became a reality, a withering form of nostalgia for times long past. It can be easy to see science as evil, technology unchecked as the source of all ills, all misfortunes. With the courier at the helm, it was all this and more. Old world blues, new world misery. The two became one in the courier's shadow. We could say more. But the stories in the big empty speak for themselves. Now armed with the transportal ponder, the courier could return to the dome at any time and crack open the secrets of the big empty one by one. The sink sat vigilant, waiting for its master to return, shoes covered in Mojave dust. Only one road yet remained, and it was one the courier had to walk alone. Wouldn't 
give to be able to pick up Radio New Vegas. Mm, those cats can really play. Might I be safe in the assumption that matters with the think tank have been satisfactorily computed vis-a-vis -vis your residence in this domicile? Very good, sir. 